Alright. I think I might read like two or three pages at a time because if I try to read the whole thing just non stop, I'm gonna get so thirsty and I gotta stop and take a drink, you know. about but waffen jars waffen in a minor but respectable plaza in the imperial city sat or perhaps lounged lord venex building commission it was an unimaginative austere building not noted for much not noted so much for its aesthetic or architectural design as for its prodigious length if any critics wondered why such an unornamented extension extended erection held such fascination for Lord Venick they kept it to themselves in the 398th year of the third era Decumus Scotty was a senior clerk at the commission. It had been a few months since the shy middle-aged man had brought the Lord Finnack the most lucrative of all contracts, granting the commission the exclusive right to rebuild the roads of Valenwood, which had been destroyed in the Five-Year War. For this he had become the darling of the managers and the clerks, spending his days recounting his adventures more or less faithfully, although he did omit the ending of the tale, since many of them had partaken in a celebratory anthropa roast provided by the silence dry. Informing one's listeners that they've gorged on human flesh improves very few stories of any good taste. Scotty was neither particularly, particularly ambitious nor hardworking, so he did not mind that Lord Vinnick not had not given him anything to actually do. Whenever the squat little gnomish man would happen, to come as Scotty. In the, happened upon to come with Scotty in the offices. Lord Finnick would always say, You're a credit to the commission. Keep up the good work. In the beginning, Scotty had worried that he was supposed to be doing something. But as the months went on, he merely replied, Thank you, I will. There was, on the other hand, the future to consider. He was not a young man, and though he was receiving a respectable salary for someone not doing actual work, Scotty considered that soon he might have to retire and not get paid for doing, for not doing work. It would be nice, he decided, if Lord Vanek had out of gratitude for the millions of gold a Valenwood contract was generating, might deign to make Scotty a partner, or at least give him a small percentage of the bounty. To come as Scotty was no good at asking for things like that, which was one of the reasons why, previous to his signal successes in Valenwood as a senior clerk for Lord Atreus. He was a lousy agent. He had just about made up his mind to say something to Lord Vanek when his lordship unexpectedly pushed things along. You're a credit to commission, the waddling little thing said and then paused. Do you have a moment free on your schedule? Scotty nodded eagerly and followed his lordship to his hideously decorated and very enviable hectare of office space. 
Zenithar blesses us for your presence at the commission, and the little fellow squeaked grandly. I don't know whether you know this, but we were having a bad time before you came along. We had impressive projects for certain, but they were not successful. In Black Marsh, for example, for years we've been trying to improve the roads and other routes of travel for commerce. I put my best fan, best man, Fleece's Tio, on it, but every year, despite Staggering investments of time and money, the trade along those routes only gets slower and slower. Now we have your very clean, very, very profitable, available contract to boost the commission's profits. I think it's time you were rewarded. Scotty grinned a grin of great modesty and subtle avarice. I want you to take over the Black Marsh account from Flesius T.O. Scotty shook as if awakening from a pleasant dream to hideous reality. My lord, I I couldn't. Nonsense, chirped Lord, chirped lord Vanek. Don't worry about Tio. He will be happy to retire on the money I give him, particularly as soul-wrenchingly difficult as this Black Marsh business has been just a sort of a challenge, my dear Decumus. Scotty didn't utter a sound, though his mouth feebly formed the word no as Lord Vanek brought out the box of documentation on Black Marsh. You're a fast reader, Lord Vanek guessed. You can read it all en route. En route to Black Marsh, of course. The tiny fellow giggled. You are a funny chap. Where else would you go to learn about the work that's being done? And how to improve it? The next morning, the stack of documentation hardly touched. Decumus, Scotty, again the journey southeast to Black Marsh. Lord Vanek had hired an able-bodied guard, a rather taciturn red guard named Malik to protect his best agent. They rode south along the Niven and then southeast along the Silverfish, continuing on into the wilds of Cyrodiil where the river tributaries had no names and the very vegetation seemed to come from another world than the nice civilized gardens of the northern imperial province. Scotty's horse was tied to Malix, so the clerk was able to read. It made it difficult to pay attention to the path they were taking, but Scotty knew he needed at least a cursory familiarity with the commission's business dealings in Black Marsh. It was a huge box of paperwork going back 40 years when the commission had been given several million in gold by a wealthy trader, Lord Zelicles Pinos Riva Rivina to improve the condition of the road from Bidian to Cyrodiil. At that time, it took three weeks of preposterously long time for the rice and the root he was importing to arrive half rotten in the Imperial province. Pinos Ravino was long dead, but many other investors over the decades, including Pelagius IV himself, had hired the commission to build roads, drain swamps, construct bridges, devise anti-smuggling systems, hire mercenaries, and in short, do everything that the greatest empire in the history knew would work to aid trade in the Black Marsh. 
According to the latest figures, the result was of this was that it took two and a half months for goods now thoroughly rotten to arrive. Scotty found that when he looked upon after concentrating on what he was reading, the landscape had always changed, always dramatically, always for the worse. This is Blackwood, sir, said Malik to Scotty's unspoken question. It was dark and woodsy, so to come as Scotty thought that a very appropriate name. The question he had longed to ask, which in due course he did ask, was, What's that terrible smell? Slough Point, sir, Malik replied as they turned to the next bend where the umbragious tunnel of tangled tree and vine opened to a clearing. There squatted a cluster of formal beer buildings in the dreary imperial design f favored by Lord Vanek's commission. And every emperor since Tiber, together with a stench so eye-blindingly, stomach-wrenchingly awful, that Scotty wondered suddenly if it were deadly poisonous. The swarms of blood-colored, sand-grain-sized insects obscured the air, did not improve the view. Scotty and Malik battled at the buzzing clouds as they rode their horses towards the largest of the buildings, which on approach revealed itself to be perched at the edge of a thick black river. From its size and serious aspect, Scotty guessed it to be the census and excise office for the wide white bridge that stretched across the burbling dark water to the reeds on the out outer side. It was very nice, bright, sturdy looking. It was a very nice, bright, sturdy. Uh, it was a very nice, bright, sturdy looking bridge built, Scotty knew, by his commission. A poxy, irritable inf official opened the door quickly on Scotty's first knock. Come in, come in quickly. Don't let the fleshies in. Flesh flies in. Flesh flies, the cumus. Scotty trembled. You mean they eat human flesh? If you're fool enough to stand around and let them, the soldier said, rolling his eyes. He had half an ear, and Scotty, looking around the other, the other soldiers in the fort, noted that they were all well chewed. One of them had no nose at all to speak of. Now what's your business? 